Let's go to John 15, because John 15 is another one. Um, and maybe when you guys talk to people and you talk about salvation by grace, you talk about eternal security, you may come across these verses again and again and again where people try and use these parables and stories in order to support either a work salvation or the fact that you can lose your salvation. And this one about fruit is always really prevalent. We talked about Matthew 7 last week, um, and then we just saw before with the parable of the sower, they say, oh, only the one that had fruit, you know, is, is the, truly the one that's saved. And another one here is in John 15, which is the vine and the branches, where Jesus said, you know, I'm the vine, you are the branches, the branches will bring forth fruit. And I'll say, ah, oh, the branches that didn't bring forth fruit, they're the ones that aren't really saved. And, you know, Jesus is going to take them away and be cast into the fire. And, uh, you know, you're not really saved because you're not proving your salvation. Well, let's read John 15. And we'll go through it, just, uh, and I'll show you the differences, and show you that this is not actually what it's teaching at all. Um, John 15. I am the true vine, my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. Um, if he, that, if he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. So we're told here, you know, Jesus is the vine, we're the branches, he wants us to bring forth more fruit, and he's going to purge us in order for us to bring forth more fruit, and this is how God is glorified. Now, fruit can mean several things in the Bible. It may be the things we say. It can be the people that we get saved. Um, and it can be um, our, our rewards and, and the way we act as well. But what, what, what can fruit mean in this instance? Um, it, it, it could mean all those things. But um, let's see. I want to just show you here because um, people generally will try and make it only mean works. And they'll say, like, well, if you don't have works you know, therefore you're not saved because he's going to take it away. Well, let, let's say even if it is works. I don't think this is what this passage is teaching. Let me show you. So in, um, let's just go from the beginning again. I am the true vine and my father is the husband, husbandman. Now look at this. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. So there's a couple of things in this passage here. First of all, this is not a branch that is not in Jesus Christ. This is a branch that is in Jesus Christ, because he's saying every branch in me, right? So this is somebody that is abiding in Jesus Christ. Later on, we see the person that is not abiding in Jesus Christ. So he says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Now, is there anything here in verse 2 about being thrown into the fire, about being cast out, about losing eternal life, losing your salvation? No. He just uses the phrase that the branch is taken away. Now, what does taken away mean? Well, this is open for interpretation, isn't it? Is, is taken away going to contradict salvation by grace? Is taken away going to contradict eternal security? Clear passages in the Bible? No, right? So this is just saying here that there's a branch that's in him that's not bearing fruit that God is going to take away, right? So if we were to align that with what we believe about salvation, what we believe about eternal security, you could say that, well, what he means by this is maybe he's going to remove you from the earth. Maybe he's going to get you out of church. You know, if you're not bearing fruit, you're probably not going to be in church that much. You know, you're not going to be amongst the vine. You know, we talked about the church being the body of Christ. Generally, people that are not being a fruitful Christian aren't in church, you know. And sometimes God is going to have to purge that branch. He says here, every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. So people that are trying to bear fruit, God is going to try and clean up that branch. He's going to clean up your life. And that's why sometimes when you start living for God, hey, you might lose some of your worldly friends. You might find some opposition 
with your family members or your colleagues. You might lose some people that used to like hanging around you but don't like hanging around you anymore uh, and things like that because God is trying to clean up your life. He wants you to bring forth more fruit. He wants glory from your life. And the more He purges you, the more fruit you're going to bear, the more glory He gets. Now, another thing as well with being taken away when you take something away, where does it end up going? Like if I take something away from Simon, who has it now? I've got it now, right? So you see how it's different to a branch that's being cast out, right? Because cast away is you're away from God. But then if there's a branch there and he's taking the branch away, that means the branch is with him now. So it could mean that, you know, like Ananias and Sapphira in the New Testament, when they lied about how much they gave to the apostles, God killed them. You know, he took them away but they didn't lose their salvation. You know? So every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. Again, people will try and take this abide in me as you know, you're, you're like walking on the narrow way, you're doing the right things, you're keeping the works, right? I don't think that's, you know, you could... You could interpret abide in me different ways. The way, the, the way I think the right interpretation is, it just means you're saved. Once you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're abiding in Christ and He in you. I don't think it's like a perpetual thing. I think once you bring forth fruit, that's, you know, once you are abiding in Christ and you're in the branches trying to bring forth more fruit, that's the work you do for Jesus Christ, the rewards and the things that we talked about last week. But just abiding in Him is not something that needs to be preserved. I think it's once you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are abiding in Him, He is abiding in you because you're saved and you're sealed. Now why do I think that? We read on, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. So what I think this is saying here, and that, with that interpretation, is if you're not even saved, you might be trying to win souls to Christ and things like that, but you're not you're not bearing any fruit because you're not even saved. You have to be saved, right, to, in order to be bearing fruit for God. So um, that's why he's saying, you know, you can't bear fruit except you abide in me because without me you can do nothing. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Let's go on to verse 6. If a man... So here's the other scenario, right, where people get mixed up between the branch that's taken away and the branch that is cast, away, cast out. If a man abide not in me. So you see the difference now. There was the, if a man abide in me, he, he doesn't bear fruit, he's taken away. This is, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. So this is the branch that is thrown out of the presence of God. Um, cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. So some people, when they try and come up with a different understanding of this parable, say, well, it's not that this is talking about hell, it's just the, the, the burning desire of wanting to be with God or something like that when you're cast out. So they'll, you're cast away and it's just, maybe you're cast away and it's the trials and temptations and chastisement that God gives you. Um, I personally think when it says, you know, you're cast into a fire, you're cast forth and you're burned, it's hard not to take that as, as hell. You know, because the chastisement of God on a son of God as a believer is not fire and brimstone. It, it, it's, it's different. It's chastisement with a rod. Whereas this is talking about gathering them up uh, and casting them into a fire very close to whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So I think the right understanding of this is, see, if you're not abiding in Jesus, you're not saved, therefore you are not taken away. You're actually cast forth as a branch and men, which the angels will gather up people and cast them into the lake of fire, then they are burned. Now, I won't go into all the reasons why I believe, um, you know, I won't go into all the verses, sorry, of why I believe it's abiding in Christ, it's just salvation. But verse 7, I think, gives us a hint, and there's many verses in the Bible that sort of link this thought together. He says here, if you abide in me, and the clue I think we're given here is, and my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the Scriptures, and you're familiar with how the different parts of the Trinity are referred to, it's pretty interesting when you look up abide and abideth in the Bible, um, where he says here, if ye, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. 
And we know that you know, Jesus Christ is the Word of God and the, we're, we're born again by the Word of God. You know, we're born again by the Spirit. And the fact that you know, Jesus Christ is the Word of God, Jesus, when he was speaking in John 6, said, the words that I speak unto you, they are Spirit and they are life. Right? So it's like the Word is in you, the Spirit lives in you, Jesus lives in you, Jesus is the Word, the Word is truth. And we read in, 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 in 1 John, I'm pretty sure, that the, the Spirit is truth. You know, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Um, and even in 1 John 2, it talks about the anointing which you received, and it is truth and is no lie, abideth in you. So you see how the Word is truth, Jesus is truth, the Spirit is truth, He's abiding in you. Um, it's all sort of linked up. So that's why I believe when the Bible talks about abiding in Him, it's salvation. It's not a, a continual daily thing that we do, like some people would take it to mean, like your works or uh, as you uh, believe. Um, but, but it could. It could work that way as well. I mean, even if you took this as works, you could say, well, you know, if you abide in Christ and you're not bearing any fruit, He's going to take you away. You know, the works. If you're not doing the works, He's going to take you away. Maybe you're going to get out of church or maybe He's going to kill you. 